It's time for Orchard Skills. Web development has never been easy, but over the past decade, it has increased in complexity. Front-end web development defaults to JavaScript as a solution for every problem. JavaScript frameworks, package managers, and tooling make a vast and powerful ecosystem with a variety of options, and they all share a common issue. These solutions are complex, bloated, and have a steep learning curve. Challenging the status quo is bl- Blazor, a web framework that's not only powerful, but productive too. Blazor uses .NET Core's architecture for common patterns and practices across the entire stack. Blazor leverages .NET Core's capability to run anywhere by supporting a client-side and server-side hosting model. The duality of Blazor provides choices while remaining flexible enough to switch between hosting models easily. Blazor combines the ease of Razor with other .NET Core concepts like dependency injection, configuration, and routing. It's borrowed the best patterns from popular JavaScript frameworks like Angular and React while leveraging Razor templates, and it's provided parity with other .NET conventions and tooling. In a previous video titled Blazor WebAssembly Integrated with Orchard Core CMS, we first looked at integrating Blazor with Orchard Core CMS. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be using Blazor WebAssembly as a front end for a Orchard core CMS web application. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. Since our first video on Blazor WebAssembly, a lot has changed. Last year, on November 10th at .NET Conf 2020, Microsoft released .NET 5. Initially, the first release of Blazor was designed with the Mono.NET framework. This framework was designed for Linux and later became the mobile platform for Xamarin. Now, Blazor uses the more unified ASP.NET 5 platform. Microsoft made significant improvements to Blazor WebAssembly runtime performance. .NET 5 is now two to three times faster for most scenarios. There were many new features added to Blazor WebAssembly, most notably CSS isolation, JavaScript isolation, debugging improvements, and lazy loading. Blazor offers many benefits to .NET developers, ranging from providing a single-page application, SPA, framework option, to features like two-way binding and offline support, just to name a few. But one of the main benefits that have been resonating with a lot of .NET developers is the fact that it's component-based, whereas it's highly recommended to start with a Blazor application whenever possible. It's also plausible to consider integrating Blazor components into existing ASP.NET applications, or Razor pages for that matter. The scenario comes up in one or two cases. The first, if you have a huge investment in an existing ASP.NET Core application and you are not ready to migrate to Blazor, but would like to make use of Blazor components. And second, you would like to migrate to Blazor eventually, but you are planning on gradually getting there. The solution is the same in both cases. It basically involves adding Blazor to your ASP.NET Core middleware. In a previous video entitled Orchard Core OpenID Connect Code Flow with Blazing Orchard, we integrated a Blazor client application by leveraging Orchard Core as a decoupled CMS using REST APIs. In this scenario, we will be using Blazor WebAssembly as a front end for the Orchard Core CMS application. Our Blazor WebAssembly component-based code will be integrated into the Orchard Core CMS application. In order to create a Blazor WebAssembly front end for Orchard Core, we will need to clone both repositories, Blazing Orchard and Blazing Orchard Core module. Please refer to the previous video as a reference. Combine both repositories into one solution. Orchard Core now supports .NET 5. Therefore, update all the projects in the Blazing Orchard Core module repository to .NET 5. The easiest way to do that is to click on the project and update the target framework to .NET 5.0. You will also need to add a reference to the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Components.WebAssembly.Server to include that into your Orchard Core CMS web application. 
Now click on startup.cs. Scroll down to the configure services and you'll need to add these two services. Services.addOrchardCoreCMS and then also services.addCores option, options.addDefaultPolicy, allow any origin allow any header dot allow any method and then also scroll down and inside the configure method you'll also need to add app dot use cores app dot use html redirection app dot use blazor framework files and app dot use static files and also make sure that you have app dot use orchard core You'll need to create a WW root with all the necessary CSS, JavaScript, pages, shared, and CSHTML files. And the easiest way to do that is just to generate an ASP.NET application through the template, and then just copy the files into your project. Click on the index.cshtml file, and what you'll need to do is add a div space ID equals app loading dot 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 and then close your div. Then you also need an at section scripts and you'll need to include scripts equals source underscore framework slash blazer dot webassembly dot js and then end your script tag. And in your main Orchard Core CMS web application, you want to right click on dependencies and click on add project reference. And you want to make sure that blazingorchard.web.client is checked to include that as a reference and then press the OK button. And then finally, you want to go to the blazingorchard.web.application and click on your main menu.razor file. And here, modify the navbar to the navbar settings that were generated by the template. You can use this code as a reference. So now we're ready to run the application. Go up here and click on the green play triangle button. Enter your site name. We'll put Orchard Skills. For the recipe, we want to select the Blazing Orchard recipe. Enter in your username, your email, password, confirm password, and then press the finish setup button. Okay, great. Our Blazor WebAssembly application is running inside Orchard Core CMS. We can click on counter button. You can see that we're adding counts to the button. And we can click on the about, and we have the about page. And then we can go back to the home page. Isn't that clever? Now to recap, we clone both Blazing Orchard repositories. We combine the code from the two repositories into one solution. We updated the Blazing Orchard .orchard Core module project to .NET 5. We added the Blazor server NuGet to the Orchard Core CMS project. We added the necessary files, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, from the ASP.NET Core application template. We added a reference to the Blazor client. We modified the Bootstrap menu. We modified the index.cshtml to include call to the WebAssembly application. We ran the CMS web application, and inside the CS web application, the Blazor WebAssembly application called the REST APIs to retrieve the menus, the page content information, and rendered the content through Orchard Core using the Shapes technology. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.